Hello everyone, it's Becca from Becca Books and Bujo, and we have a lot of books to haul. <laughs> it has only been like a month since I hauled books and I somehow have like 40 books to haul already. I don't know. I have a problem, but it's a problem I love, so we're not gonna we're not gonna complain. I like to talk about books that I acquire in the ways that I acquire them. So the first stack we're gonna talk about are books that were gifted to me in some way. The first one is my first ever Advanced Reader's Edition, a physical copy. This is The Cheesemaker's Daughter by Kristen Vukovic. I was approached by this author's publicist and they sent me her book. I don't know much about it. I believe it's about a young woman who is in a difficult marriage in the United States and she decides to go back to Croatia to help her father and his cheese factory. Sure, I'm gonna try it. It sounded like the family dynamics that I like and uh, a contemporary fiction that I think I would enjoy. So I'm excited to give this one a try. Uh, my mother happened to give me this one because she accidentally left it here when she was visiting. She was like 30 pages from the end and I ended up sending her pictures of the end of the book so she could complete it because she really wanted to finish it. But then once she read it at home, she's like, you keep it. So. This is Someone We Know by Sherry Lupina. I've actually never read anything by Sherry Lupina. I think I have another one in a stack down here that I'll tell you about later. But uh, yeah, I just know that it's thriller, suspense, mystery. Um, <clears throat> This one says, in a quiet, leafy suburb in upstate New York, a teenager has been sneaking into houses and into the owner's computers as well, learning their secrets and maybe sharing some of them too. I don't know. My mom said she liked it, so I'm going to give it a try. Now these next two are from my friend Alexa. You've met Alexa before if you've been on this channel for a while. Uh, and she found these two at library book sales and decided to get them for me. I offered to pay her for them. She's like, nah, don't worry about it. Because, you know, books at library book sales are like a dollar or two. So this is Mad Honey by Jodi Picoult and Jennifer Finney Boylan. Uh, I know Jodi Picoult as an author. I don't know the other, but this says it's a st soul stirring novel about what we choose to keep from our past and what we choose to leave behind. She read it and really loved it. And so I'm excited to give it a try. And she also got me this copy of Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. Frederick Bachman is one of my favorite authors and this is one of his books that I don't own. And I'm excited to have a copy. I wish it had the dust jacket, but I'll get over it. It's the story that I want, not the dust jacket. So uh, if you don't know about this story, it is about a bunch of people who are taken hostage in an apartment after a bank robbery. And it's really fun and about anxious people. So it's great. <laughs> And now I have some that are gifted from my friend Molly. Molly and I went book shopping together a few weeks ago now and I got a lot of books to show you that I actually bought but she gave me a stack of books that she thought I would like. So uh, this is Every Note Played by Lisa Genova. I don't know anything about this one. Is this the one that from neuroscientist and the New York Times bestseller author of Still Alice, Lisa Genova comes a powerful exploration of regret, forgiveness, freedom, and what it means to be alive. So there's going to be some music involved, which I like a book that involves music. So, okay, I will give it a try. Molly, uh, she gave me Olive Kitteridge, which is by Elizabeth Strout. I actually have some other books by Elizabeth Strout to haul later, and I think I'm going to do an author taste test with Elizabeth Strout because I've never read any of her books. I've heard that they're just kind of simple fiction. Um, not that the writing is simple, but it's just about kind of everyday things. Uh, this one says, at times stern, at other times patient, at times perceptive, at other times in sad denial, Olive Kitteridge, a retired school teacher, deplores the changes in her little town of Crosby, Maine, and in the world at large, but she doesn't always recognize the changes in those around her. A lounge musician haunted by a past romance, a former student who has lost the will to live, Olive's own adult child who feels tyrannized by her irrational sensitivities, and her husband, Henry, who finds his loyalty to his marriage both a blessing and a curse. So it's just going to be about everyday people and what is going on in their lives. I like books like that. Uh, she gave me The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis. I 
have read, what did I read by Fiona Davis? But I like her uh, kind of like 1920s historical fiction. Um, this one is, yeah, 1920s. I am good. It says, uh, Fiona Davis returns with a tantalizing novel about secrets, betrayal, and murder within one of New York City's most impressive Gilded Age mansions. Cool. Talking about rich people? Sure. I'm not rich, but I can read about people that are rich. <laughs> uh, this one is called Everything Here is Beautiful by Mira T. Lee. This one looks like it's about two sisters. Miranda is the older responsible one and always been her younger sister's protector. Lucia, Lucia, Lucia? <laughs> I don't know how to speak or read. Lucia, the headstrong, unpredictable one whose impulses are huge and often life-changing. When their mother dies and Lucia starts hearing voices, it's Miranda who must find a way to reach her sister. I think there's some mental illness in here uh, that might be difficult to read about, but I'm willing to give it a try. Then this is a nonfiction that Molly gave me, Notes from a Blue Bike, The Art of Living Intentionally in a Chaotic World by Tish Oxenrider. Uh, yeah, this sounds good. She, <laughs> I was a little leery, but Molly was like, you gotta give it a try, Becca. So I'm gonna try it. And I do think I want to live more intentionally. I feel like life can just pass you by really quickly. And so if you can live in the moment and realize the good things around you, it makes your life better, and I feel like this might uh, might help that. Oh, wow. Here are some of the things that they do in their life. Buying less and enjoying more. Changing their approach to food, work, travel, education, and entertainment. Discovering the grace and the sanity-saving joy of the 80-20 principle. I don't know what that is. Fostering global awareness and a sense of curiosity and adventure in themselves and their children. Learning to live with partial and imperfect solutions without losing sight of what matters. Seeking out emotional, spiritual, and physical revival. And creatively planning and pursuing a life they can believe in. I will give it a try. I have been really good about reading nonfiction this year, so maybe this will be my next one. Then we have another thriller, The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. I've seen this everywhere, and now I'm so excited to have a copy. Thank you, Molly. Um, oh, you have some notes in here, Molly. <laughs> anyway, it says The Golden Couple. Perfection is deceiving. Dun, dun, dun. I don't want to know much about thrillers going into them, so that's all we're going with there. And here's another Sherry Lupina, Not a Happy Family. Oh, I hit myself. <laughs> the only thing I know about this one is that it's in all of Book of the Month's ads when it's that mother and daughter and the mom is like, here's the book about love and how you spend too much time in your work relationship. And then the daughter's like, well, I have a book for you too. It's about not a happy family. <laughs> and so it's, anyway, that's all I know about this book. That's all I want to know. Okay, so those were all gifted to me. Thank you, lovely, lovely people who gifted me those books. Uh, next, books that I bought kind of full price. Um, my book of the month books for what month was this? April. I got Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I love Abby Jimenez. Her romances are perfect for me. And this one was just phenomenal. I already read it. I read it before I even got the book because I had an e-arc. But uh, yeah super fun romance that takes place in Minneapolis with a fun little curse element and I just I love her characters and the way that she can write real raw characters that go through very difficult things it's just really good then I just I had to get this <laughs> this is the frozen river by Ariel Lahan so many people have said this is their favorite book of the year so far and I need, I need to read it. It is about a midwife in the 18th century. And I think she questions a doctor's decision or something after a death. And so there's a mystery involved. I can't wait. I want to read it. And then two that I got at BAM. BAM books. Books a million. Whatever it is. I don't know much about BAM. But I walked into BAM one day and went to their like clearance section, sale section, and found The Man Who Died Twice, which is the second in the Thursday Murder Club mystery series by Richard Osman. Have I read the first one? No. But do I feel like I will love this series? Yes. So I bought the second one. And then I got One, Two, Three by Lori Frankel. I loved This Is How It Always Is by Lori Frankel. And so I'm excited to try another book by her. This is about 
triplets in a small town where nothing changes, but then suddenly everything does. That's from the inside. Anyway, I'm excited. I really loved her writing and her storytelling, so we'll see how it goes with this one. Okay, <laughs> then we'll go to ones that I paid not so much for because it was at used bookstores. And it's this stack right here, which I kind of already talked about these with Molly when we went shopping. I'll link the vlog up here, but um, I'll just quickly list them for you. Restart by Gordon Corman, a middle grade. The Wild Robot by Peter Brown, another middle grade. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, another middle grade. Do you see a theme? <laughs> I'm actually trying to collect this version for my kids for some reason. I don't know. So I still need one, three, and four, but I have two, five, six, and seven. Next up, I got The Appeal by Janice Hallett. I heard about this one from Meg with Books and sounds like a good mystery thriller. Here are my other Elizabeth Strout books. We've got O. William and Lucy by the Sea. Is there an order that I need to read these? Because you should let me know. I do think I would like to do a uh, try an author or try a new author vlog with Elizabeth Strout now that I have three books by her and never read anything by her. So let me know if there's a certain order I should read those in. Another middle grade, Nevermore, which is The Trials of Morgan Crow. Is it, is the series called Nevermore or is the series called The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend? I don't know, but this was on my TBR for March, just this past March for middle grade March and uh, never got to it, but I had the library book on my TBR cart for the longest time. And then this copy was for $3 and I said, fine, <laughs> I will buy that book. I got Insurgent by Veronica Roth. I own Divergent and Allegiant, but I never owned Insurgent physically. I think I had the ebook version or possibly just got it off of the library. So now I own a copy. And unfortunately, Divergent is in paperback, but I'm not going to get too bent up about it. Uh, a Woman is No Man by Etoff Room. I absolutely loved Evil Eye by Etoff Room. I read it last year. One of my favorite books of 2023. And now I can't wait to read this one. I've heard phenomenal things. Uh, I don't know much about it, but the little tagline, tagline on the top says, where I come from, we keep these stories to ourselves. To tell them to the outside world is unheard of, dangerous, the ultimate shame. Looks like we're following two timelines in two different areas of the world, Palestine in 1990 and Brooklyn in 2008. I think I'm just gonna love it. I saw Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte say that anybody should read this book and so i saw it on the shelves for one dollar and i was like okay this is while justice sleeps by stacy abrams sissy abrams is a congresswoman uh oh no yeah a congresswoman i just read here a thriller set within the halls of the u.s supreme court but no she's in congress anyway should be good it's a like a political thriller, which I haven't really tried in the past, maybe a while ago, but like I said, been a while. So I'm excited to give this one a try, especially with Olivia's endorsement. Then I got this huge book. I didn't realize how huge this was. This is The Lincoln Highway by Amor Tolls. I really love A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls. I would like to read Rules of Civility, but I got this book for free because if you bought six at this one store, you got a free one or I had a punch card or something. So I was like, let's pick the biggest book in this whole store and get that one for free. No, I really like his writing and um, this one should be good. Historical fiction, a master of absorbing, I can't read, a master of absorbing sophisticated fiction returns with a stylish and propulsive novel set in 1950s America. And you know, Molly told me you're supposed to start this book in June and it says in June 1954. So maybe I will pick this up in a couple months. And then lastly, on this shopping day with Molly, I got My Darling Girl by Jennifer McMahon, which was up for the Goodreads horror or thriller. I don't know. But again, I don't want to know much going into thriller horrors. Actually, I think I just saw, I just saw someone talk about this. Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library. And she gave it four and a half stars. So I'm excited to give it a try.
editing Becca to jump on to say that I forgot a few books that I got that day with Molly. The first is Inside Out and Back Again by Tanha Lai. I already read this. It was a beautiful refugee story written in verse and middle grade. And I also got The Serpent and The Wings of Night. I always mess up that title. This is the first in the Crowns of Nyaxia series by Carissa Broadbent. Oh, actually, it's called The Nightborn Duet, but it's a Crowns of Nyaxia novel. I don't know. I want to be a romantic girly, so I picked this one up to try that out. And then I might as well just jump in and say there is one ebook I got during this time that is Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. It's a romance. This is it. If I got the title or the author wrong, you can see it here in this picture. It was a Kindle deal and I got it because I've been in a romance mood lately. This is a sapphic romance and I know it's a trilogy, the start of a trilogy, but I'm looking forward to it. Okay, back to the other Becca. And a couple of days ago, that would have been all the books I hauled, but then there was another library book sale in my town and I got some more books. <laughs> So, um, I got, this was one of my favorite books growing up. I loved this series by Margaret Peterson Haddix, and this is the first Among the Hidden. And so I figure whenever my kids get to that age where they can read these books, they're a little creepy. It's about families who can only have two children, and this family had three. And so they hide their third child in the attic, and um, it's just a really, I don't know, I really liked it. And when I got in a huge slump... When was that? 2021? I actually returned to this series and read the whole thing again and I still enjoyed it. So I'm excited to have the first of this series on my shelves. Whoa! Dropping books! Uh, this is Between the World and Me by ta Coates. I read this for a class in college. It was a class called The Color of Change and we read black authors from slavery time all the way to present and this was one that I got from my uh, bookshop, my college bookshelf bookshop, but I rented it and so I had to return it and I wish I wouldn't have done that. So now I own a copy, got it for two bucks, and I would really like to rewrite, reread this actually and then try some more of Ta-Nehisi Coates because this is the only experience I've had with him. Uh, another middle grade written in verse, we have Love That Dog by Sharon Creech. And you know, I don't actually know if I read this book or not, but now that I own it, I can either reread it or read it for the first time. And it's one I could literally sit down and read tonight. It's just a short little uh, middle grade written in verse about a dog, I think. Meet Jack, who tells this story with a little help from some paper, a pencil, his teacher, and a dog named Skye. It's gonna be cute. Okay, this one I was really excited about. I, okay, 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 real big story here. So I lied when I said I went to one library book sale this weekend, I went to two. Uh, one of my viewers suggested I try the Egan Library, or it was actually the Westcott Friends of the Library book sale. It's the Dakota County Library and they do a book sale biannually. It was just this past weekend and I went on Sunday. It's a book sale that runs from Thursday to Sunday and on Sunday it was really picked over and I did not have the best of luck. I got a bunch of children's books and actually Among the Hidden was from there too. But I did find this book, My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante and this was um, books with Emily Fox's favorite book and then a friend that I went to high school with she said it was her favorite book of last year and it just I I think it could be up my alley um, it says it's from one of Italy's most acclaimed authors comes a ravishing and generous hearted novel about a friendship that lasts a lifetime the story of Elena and Lila begins in the 1950s in a poor but vibrant neighborhood on the outskirts of Naples Growing up on these tough streets, the two girls learn to rely on each other ahead of anyone or anything else as their friendship, beautifully and meticulously rendered, becomes a not always perfect shelter from hardship. Ferrante has created a memorable portrait of two women, but My Brilliant Friend is also the story of a nation. Through the lives of Elena and Lila, Ferrante gives her readers the story of a neighborhood, a city, and a country undergoing momentous change. So this is the first in a series called the Neapolitan series and I just I had heard Emily Fox rave about it 
all last year and so when I saw this copy at the Egan library I decided to pick it up. Okay back to just the library sale in my town. I got Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetys. I have only read one book by Ruta Sepetys but now I have Salt to the Sea on my shelves and Between Shades of Grey and I can't wait to try this author out again. She writes wonderful historical fiction for young adults but I feel like they're really good for adults too and um, I've heard this one is her best so I'm excited to have my own copy. I found this Jasmine Guillory Drunk on Love. I thought it was a part of her series, the wedding date series, but I don't think it is. So messed up there, but uh, I do like Jasmine Guillory as an author and it's always nice to have another romance on my shelves. Next I got Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. I've heard of Lisa Jewell because of her most recent release, uh, uh, Hmm. What is that called? Something knows? This one. I'm dead to the world right now. Anyway, I'm excited to try something else by her. I haven't read that other one. None of this is true. Mm. I'm so smart. This one says... Uh, author returns with another taut thriller following a group of people whose lives shockingly intersect when a young woman disappears. Bum bum bum! Don't want to know much more than that. Okay, this was, I think, the best find at this book sale. Saturday Night at the Lakeside Supper Club by J. Ryan Straddle. I loved uh, The Longer Queen of Minnesota by this author, and this is his most recent release, and it was $2. $2, you guys. I don't know what it's about, but I'm gonna love it. I'm just gonna love it. It's they usually take place in Minnesota. They have one or he has wonderful characters that he writes about. This one says Mariel Prager needs a break. Her husband Ned is having an identity crisis. Her spunky beloved restaurant is bleeding money by the day, and her mother Florence is stubbornly refusing to leave the church where she's been holed up for more than a week. The Lakeside Supper Club has been in Mariel's family for decades, but it also caused a rift between mother and daughter that never quite healed. Okay, yeah, it's gonna be great. I, again, I loved his first book and now excited to read this one. This was the win of the day, I think. Uh, this one I'm pretty happy to have too. This is Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents by Isabel Wilkerson. I haven't read anything by this author, but this is a nonfiction about the unspoken caste system that has shaped America and shows how our lives today are still defined by a hierarchy of human divisions. I've heard great things and, uh, I think I'll be happy to own this copy. The next one I also heard from Emily Fox. I feel like I relate to Emily Fox on some of our literary fiction, but some not. And uh, this one I think will work. This is 10 minutes, 38 seconds in this strange world by Elif Shafak. And it sounds like a woman is killed. She is a prostitute and killed on the streets and her mind continues to be active after she is killed for 10 minutes and 38 seconds. And I heard that it made Emily cry and I like a book that makes me cry. So when I saw this on the shelves for $2, I was like, why not? And lastly, I have an interesting one, I think. It is called State of Terror by Louise Penny and Hillary Rodham Clinton. Look at those ladies. I love Louise Penny's series, the Detective Armand Gamache, no, Inspector, Chief Inspector Armand Gamache series. And I told my parents actually to look for Louise Penny and they're like, here's this one, but it's also by Hillary Clinton. I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. Uh, I think it's a political thriller, a novel of unsurpassed thrills and uncomparable insider expertise. Uh... <laughs> Sure. I'm excited to own this one and uh, see what Louise Penny and Hillary Clinton were able to write together. So, yeah, um, just, just look at that chaos and mess that I have to put away on my shelves, but I am so excited to have all of these books. Let me know in the comments down below, what should I start with? If you were me, out of these 40 or so books, what book would you pick up first and why? 
Thank you so much for watching. Like this video on your way out. Consider subscribing to my channel if you are new here and you would like to see more bookish and bullet journaling content from me. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.